Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 74. Go forth and stand upon the mount, for truth is at thy side. The very rocks may seem to break and earth to open wide, yet error's tempest and its fire before that still small voice retire. Hymn number 74. Scriptural will be given by Imogene from Australia. The Bible. Mark. Now, when Jesus was risen, early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, as they sat at meat. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Matthew, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
Our Father, who is on earth in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give, Give us, us this, this day, day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Now let's sing hymn number 29. Breaking through the clouds of darkness, black with error, doubt, and fear, lighting up each somber shadow with a radiance soft and clear, filling every heart with gladness that its holy power feels, comes the Christian science gospel, sin it kills and grief it heals. Hymn number 29. <laughs>
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin our Sunday mornings here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion where we learn how to practice this incredible science better in our lives. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, or if you'd like to hear it again, you can find it on our YouTube channel and also on our Vimeo channel, as well as on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11, and that Sunday school is available to children anywhere in the world. It has its own dedicated teleconference number, and many of our Sunday school students don't live in the area and do attend via telephone. And that means that if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, your child can attend our Sunday school. Just call us, we'll give you the number, and our Sunday school teachers would be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives helped and literally transformed through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers. So you can bring the whole family. And this being only the sixth day of Christmas, I'd like to recommend some selected writings about Christmas written by Mary Baker Reddy. And there's a link to these provided by, for on the uh, homepage of our English website, one of the articles featured, Selected Writings About Christmas by Mary Baker Eddy. And since we have six more days to go in Christmas, worthwhile readings for the next six days. And for those of you here in Plainfield, uh, don't forget to pick up your January full-text lesson sermon booklet and or your quarterly for the first quarter of 2024. You're going to need it tomorrow. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony of healing from Miscellaneous Writings by Mary Baker Eddy. Uh, that attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading this morning will be given by Kara from New Mexico. Four years ago, I was healed by reading Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. The third day, one of my worst claims gave way. The book was full of light and disease vanished as naturally as darkness gives place to light, although it was about six months before I was entirely healed. Seeing this truth in its purity showed me where to take my stand, and in defending it, I have the prince of this world to meet. Mortal mind has even called me crazy, but what a blessing to know the nothingness of that mind and that divine principle governs all its ideas and will place each where it belongs. If our master was persecuted, can his servants hope to escape? I know in some degree what Paul meant when he said he rejoiced in tribulations. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Many claims that have baffled the skill of the physicians have disappeared through my understanding of truth. What a blessing that we can break the bread of life to others and so add to our crown of rejoicing. S-E-R 
Kansas City, Missouri. The Bible and the Christian Science Textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible text in their denominational spiritual import, an application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated or fettered by human hypotheses, and authorized by Christ. And today's lesson sermon can be found on page 30 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Christian Science. The golden text is from John. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The responsive reading is from Isaiah and Jeremiah. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat, and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock, and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Day Day from Georgia will now read. I will read from the Bible. <laughs> Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. John. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, 
which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that, says Thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Luke, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and glorified God. John. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. 
for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son thereof shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Galatians. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Beyond the frail premises of human beliefs, above the loosening grasp of creeds, the demonstration of Christian mind healing stands a revealed and practical science. It is imperious throughout all ages as Christ's revelation of truth, of life, and of love, which remains inviolate for every man to understand and to practice. The Samaritan woman said, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not that the Christ? Christ, truth, was demonstrated through Jesus to prove the power of spirit over the flesh, to show that truth is made manifest by its effects upon the human mind and body, healing sickness and destroying sin. Jesus represented Christ, the true idea of God. Paul said, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Sooner or later, we shall learn that the fetters of man's finite capacity are forged by the illusion that he lives in body instead of in soul, in matter instead of in spirit. Denial of the claims of matter is a great step towards the joys of spirit, towards human freedom, and the final triumph over the body. Neither age nor accident can interfere with the senses of soul, and there are no other real senses. Spirit's senses are without pain, and they are forever at peace. Nothing can hide from them the harmony of all things, 
and the might and permanence of truth. Men and women of all climes and races are still in bondage to material sense, ignorant how to obtain their freedom. The rights of man were vindicated in a single section and on the lowest plane of human life when African slavery was abolished in our land. That was only prophetic of further steps towards the banishment of a worldwide slavery found on higher planes of existence and under more subtle and depraving forms. The voice of God in behalf of the African slave was still echoing in our land when the voice of the herald of this new crusade sounded the keynote of universal freedom, asking a fuller acknowledgement of the rights of man as a son of God demanding that the fetters of sin, sickness, and death be stricken from the human mind and that its freedom be won, not through human warfare, not with bayonet and blood, but through Christ's divine science. God has built a higher platform of human rights, and he has built it on diviner claims. These claims are not made through code or creed, but in demonstration of on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Human codes, scholastic theology, material medicine and hygiene, fetter faith, and spiritual understanding. Divine science rends asunder these fetters, and man's birthright of soul allegiance to his maker asserts itself. I saw before me the sick, wearing out years of servitude to an unreal master, in the belief that the body governed them, rather than mind. The lame, the deaf, the dumb, the blind, the sick, the sensual, the sinner, I wished to save from the slavery of their own beliefs and from the educational systems of the pharaohs who today as of yore, hold the children of Israel in bondage. I saw before me the awful conflict, the Red Sea in the wilderness, but I pressed on through faith in God, trusting truth, the strong deliverer, to guide me into the land of Christian science, where fetters fall and the rights of man are fully known and acknowledged. I saw that the law of mortal belief included all error, and that even as oppressive laws are disputed and mortals are taught their right to freedom, so the claims of the enslaving senses must be denied and superseded. The law of the divine mind must end human bondage, or mortals will continue unaware of man's inalienable rights and in subjection to hopeless slavery, because some public teachers permit an ignorance of divine power, an ignorance that is the foundation of continued bondage and of human suffering. Discerning the rights of man, we cannot fail to foresee the doom of all oppression. Slavery is not the legitimate state of man. 
God made man free. Paul said, I was free born. All men should be free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Christian science raises the standard of liberty and cries, Follow me. Escape from the bondage of sickness, sin, and death. Jesus marked out the way. Citizens of the world accept the glorious liberty of the children of God and be free. This is your divine right. The illusion of material sense, not divine law, has bound you, entangled your free limbs, crippled your capacities, enfeebled your body, and defaced the tablet of your being. If God had instituted material laws to govern man, disobedience to which would have made man ill, Jesus would not have disregarded those laws by healing in direct opposition to them and in defiance of all material conditions. Christian science reveals God not as the author of sin, sickness, and death, but as divine principle, supreme being, mind, exempt from all evil. There is no physical science, inasmuch as all truth proceeds from the divine mind. Therefore, truth is not human. It is not a law of matter, for matter is not a lawgiver. Science is an emanation of divine mind and is alone able to interpret God aright. It has a spiritual and not a material origin. It is a divine utterance, the comforter which leadeth into all truth. In the words of St. John, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. This comforter I understand to be divine science. And we will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 30. 
The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, neath which our spirits blend like brother birds that soar and sing and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love. Hymn number 30.
with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance From my enemies To all my fears have gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb You have chosen me Love has called my name I've been born again To your family Your blood flows through my veins I'm no Let's now sing hymn number 66. From these thy children gathered in thy name, from hearts made whole, from lips redeemed from woe, thy praise, O Father, shall forever flow. Alleluia, alleluia. Hymn number 66.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Psalms. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. Amen. Amen. 